elegantly put, Dimitri. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Last time we finished up the first set of tasks to prepare for the heist on Dimitri's nightclub. This time we're going to be doing the next set of tasks to prepare for the heist for Dimitri's nightclub. Before we do that though, as we did last time, I'm going to get on the internet. Because now we have the money to get Murray's gadget. And it's actually a pretty useful gadget, I must say. But for now, uh, we could go back and play as Murray, but I think we're going to pick Sly for this round. Trust me when I say it's actually a bit better to go for Sly this this time around, and then we'll end it off with Murray. Because Murray's one kind of takes a lot to get to, and then he is kind of in an out-of-way area to get back to the safe house. So for now, uh, we could go and do the Sly mission that's right next to the safe house, but however... It will lead to doing something other than Sly, which I kind of want to get all of Sly stuff wrapped up first. So instead, we're going to head over to the Far Away Sly mission and do that first because that will teach us how to do a special move that is actually really invaluable and is like a stable move throughout the entirety of this series going forward. Is he, was he just holding a PlayStation Move thing? I think that was supposed to be like a grenade that they carried, but it really looked like he was just walking around with a PlayStation Move. Jeez, what does Dimitri pay these guys to get one of those things? Because looking at the price for those things, they do not cost cheap. Even nowadays. Alright, we're gonna head up here because the location of the slime mission is up here on the balcony. Uh, the klepto in me wants me to go down there and break all those money cases. However, I need to see this through to the end. So let's just get up here and get into the mission. Okay, Sly. There's the power boxes which route to the printing press area. To take care of them, I'll need you to put a splice clip in those spotlights. Sorry, Bentley, but those fans are spinning way too fast to walk on. They can be slowed down from this control panel, but you'll have to do a lot of pickpocketing to get at it. The guards are carrying special fragile keys that will be destroyed if you attack. Make sure you pickpocket their keys before you take those thugs out. To pickpocket guards, sneak up behind them and press the circle button. All right, we're gonna wait for this guy to turn his back on us. Oh, how far is he going? He's actually going pretty far. All right, so this level, the theater pickpocketing, actually has a lot changes to it. First things first, we're gonna grab the fan control key from that guard and then take him out. And second, I'm gonna go over the differences from the uh, the demo of this game and the early builds of it. Uh, for the early builds of this level, it's actually on the demo, which you can find uh, either through like a disc, a demo disc, or through a copy of Ratchet and Clank. Uh, what was it? Up your arsenal. Yeah, that was it. Uh, earlier builds of this level were that you couldn't even take out the guards. The guards would actually be in constant radio contact through walkie-talkies and such. So if you took out a guard, then that would basically just mean that you would fail the mission and you couldn't get through it. The guards also, I believe, uh, carried red flashlights instead of just the standard flashlights, which I don't know why Bentley made like a note of the guards with red flashlights. But for now, uh, we're just going to go and break more things. We can't do anything with the fan control unit yet because we don't have the keys for it. So instead, we're just going to go and take care of all the guards around here. Gonna yoink, yoink, and yoink. Ooh, that could have ended badly. Thankfully, if you can get a sneak attack on the guard uh, from behind, then they will not actually initiate combat with you, and it actually will be a, a quick uh, knockout, so you can actually do the takedown move against them. It's like a basically a safety feature just to, to cushion you if you accidentally do screw up and you misjudge the distance from it, because one of my all-time nemesis when it comes to gaming is depth perception. It has screwed me over many times in the past. But thankfully... Once again, there goes my depth perception. Uh, thankfully, the game actually will take mercy on you. However, I think the guards actually do have a fast recovery time if you do knock them uh, out at, like this. So it's best not to waste the chance that you have been given. 
It's gonna go around, cause even more property damage. I think this is just gonna be the go-to theme of this LP is just basically just ungodly numbers of property damage. I wonder if someone will actually go throughout this entire series uh, and see what the estimate of amount of property damage I do for either the level based or just the entire like game in general. Because I would like to see how much uh, money and damage this slide does by the end of this game. That's broken. We'll break that. Break that. I think there's only one guard back here. We don't have to worry about the guards patrolling down uh, in the little seating area out there because they won't actually see you even if their flashlight is shining right here because they don't have like a direct line of sight to you. And also, they're too big to fit back here because of they're too, just way too fat and muscly. So for now, I can break things to my leisure and don't have to worry about the repercussions. Get up here. How the hell did that get all the way up here and stuck inside the catwalk? I do like the guard up here that he's supposed to be on, uh, on duty and keeping an eye out for thieves. He's just basically really tired because he's watching TV, although I hate this channel. It's nothing but static, so I guess I could see why he's dozing off so, so much. <laughs> okay, just add insult to injury and just throw him down a floor or two. I hate this channel. Alright. Uh, these guards are actually kind of a pain to to deal with because their patrol pattern is really tight more often than not they will actually overlap each other with their flashlight so it's really important that if you do take down a guard definitely get the hell out of dodge that way you don't have to worry about the other one catching you and do this and make a run for it because that guy definitely heard that slam And you know what? Because I feel destructive. All right, come on, buddy, turn around. There we go. And this, and we're done. Nice work, Sly. Now head for the control panel to slow down the fan. All right. But well, we could go down here and, uh, you know what? I'm feeling ballsy. I might as well go down here and see if I can do the amount of property damage without getting caught by the spotlights. I don't think you, yeah, you don't even get any money for doing this. These are all, once again, I have to open my mouth and the game proves me wrong. That is a huge track record, especially like on streams and such, where I say one thing and like two seconds later, the game proves me wrong and just proves that I'm just nothing but a big fool. It's happened way too many times for it to be a coincidence. I guess at this point, I also should probably make note of a move that Sly has that the game doesn't actually tell you about. Is the fact that he does have like a charge spin attack. If you, all you have to do is just hold down the attack button, Sly will charge up this, and then he does this. It's not really that good, to be honest. It's kind of pointless, to be honest. It really doesn't have a decent use in it until the third game, to be honest, when you can actually upgrade that move to actually be useful. But it's there, I guess, if you have, like, a, a lot of things that you want to break real fast and you don't feel like just spamming the swing button, then you can just do the charge spin. Honestly, I most of the time, I forget I even have that move because it's so pointless. I wonder. Nope. Oh, there we go. All right. Nope. I thought I could actually trick it and maybe get above the, the ceiling fan and such, but nope. Won't let you. Right, for now, let's take care of those fans. Looks like the fans have stopped. Use them to get on top of the main chandelier and insert that splice clip. Alloop. Alloop. For the longest time, I also thought you could get up to the spotlights up there and somehow destroy them, but eh, you can't do that, unfortunately. That should do it. No more security in the printing press room. 
All it took was uh, just a quick pull of the handle. And now the spotlight uh, lights change to the Sly logo, which I kind of like. Also, at this point, if Dimitri has no idea who the hell is messing with this operation, then he is truly, like, really dim-witted. Because it's like, oh, there's there's a bug painting inside his office that has uh, a picture of Sly on it. There's uh, his personal save that has been broken into, and the move that was in there is stolen with Sly's icon in there. And now the security thing inside the theater over here has Sly's logo as the security lights. That was just basically Bentley telling you, hey, uh, if you see anything shiny in the guard's back pocket, definitely steal it because it's worth some money. But yeah, if Dimitri has no clue who the hell is messing with this operation at this point, either he doesn't know who Sly is, or he is just really inept. Or both. It could be both. Alright, well that guy has a shiny in his back pocket. I want it. Unfortunately, his friend right here is not really making that job easy for me. Uh-oh. Do I, do I want to be crazy? Do I really want to be crazy? I feel like if I do grab that, the guard's gonna come after me. Alright, they're splitting up. I'm just gonna sneak up on him real quick. It's all the way on the way to the hotel anyway, so might as well just do this on the way there. Hey, gold comb! That's worth a pretty penny. All forms of guards do carry shiny stuff in their back pockets. Uh, however, the flashlight guards carry the most valuable things. Standard guards usually carry only like gold to silver tier, or no, not gold to silver tier, bronze to silver tier items. However, the flashlight guards will always have a chance of dropping the highest uh, uh, trinket inside their back pockets if you can fish it out easily enough. All right, for now, let's have a midnight rendezvous. Hold it, Koopa. Constable Mila. Another policewoman hot on my tail. Please, I led you here. So that claw gang slip was a clue. Why are you helping me out? I'm not as black and white as Carmelita. I know what a menace those clockwork parts are, and I don't want the likes of the claw gang putting them to use. So what? It takes a thief to catch a thief? Something like that. But if I'm going to trust you in this case, I need to know that... You can keep up. Literally. Literally. Don't fall behind. People always ask, what the hell kind of accent Neela has? I think, given what her character was supposed to be, it's supposed to be like an Indian accent or like a Middle Eastern accent, uh, given like her outfit and such. However, I think the reason why her accent is really so hard to pin down is because of the fact that she shares the same voice actress as Carmelita in this game, who shares a different voice actress uh, from the first game. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's a running joke that I make is the fact that every time there's a new Sly game, there is always going to be a new Carmelita voice because they never can st uh, stick to one single voice for her. Sly, Bentley, and Murray, yeah, they're always going to be the same. Dimitri, everyone loves him. They're not going to change his voice, but Carmelita always gets the short end of the stick. So the reason why they, they have, like, Neela doing this, like, really weird accent throughout the game is just because they're, they're just trying to disguise the fact that it's just basically Carmelita's voice actress talking to herself, especially in the intro. One thing you need to uh, make worry about, don't get too swing happy with your cane. If you accidentally, accidentally do hit Neela, then you will actually fail this mission and you'll have to redo it. Which, some of these actually get pretty long, so it's best not to accidentally hit her. Just follow behind. Don't get too swing happy, even if there is like some really good goldy th uh, things you want to grab. Well done, Sly. We should work well together. Glad you approved. Now, legally, I can't enter Dimitri's nightclub without a warrant, but I happen to have obtained a key to his back door, which a person like yourself can use however he pleases. Oh, we are absolutely going to work well together. I like Neela. I hope nothing terrible happens to her, or with her. 
I like the way she thinks. Legally, I can't do this. I, a police officer, can't legally be held responsible for whatever happens. However, I may have accidentally grabbed a means of entering this place that a thief like you could enter. Before we head back to the safe house, I want to go up here and grab this uh, jewel box. This is one of the three treasures that you can find throughout the, the level for Paris. And there's one over here. I'm going to wait till we get Bentley to pick it up because that's where his mission leads and it's also where it ends. So might as well just grab it with him on his way back to the safe house. And that is the main reason why I wanted to wait uh, and pick Murray last. Also, because I just didn't want to keep going back and forth to the safe house to swap out to Sly, then Bentley, then Murray, then back to Sly again. Now, the location of the third treasure up here is actually kind of lucrative. It's all the way up there on one of the balconies. I think, not this one, I think it's the other one. It's kind of in a really uh, one-off location that you really don't find yourself going to. I think there might have been a clue bottle up there at one point back when we were doing that, but the treasures don't show up until after you do the bug painting quest. But for now, let's just head back here, drop off that jewel box, and let's go with Bentley. We're going to put his trigger bomb right there just because it's actually a really useful thing to have, uh, being able to throw bombs at long distance. Because Bentley, he's not good when it comes to combat. He is the worst uh, member of the Cooper game when it comes to doing like melee combat. He has a really short attack range with his little crossbow right here. He does the least amount of damage compared to Sly and Murray. However, he is the only one that can actually do range damage because, well, his crossbow. I guess it technically wouldn't be considered ranged damage because he doesn't actually fire like damaging darts. It's actually just sleep darts. However, they will be invaluable in taking care of him. He's actually probably the most competent person to take care of flashlight guards. Which, lo and behold, guess who is going to be the main threat of his mission? Okay, Bentley. To get past the laser fence, you'll need to blow it up. Press the triangle button to drop a bomb, and then get out of the way before it explodes. No one I know about turtles, I don't like the fact that Bentley's tur turtle shell just morphs and warps all over the place when he's looking around. It just, uh, it just does not seem natural. Well, being a team demolition expert, Bentley has a wider range of bombs. Some he can drop, some he can throw, some that will shrink enemies, some that will put him to sleep. But for now, speaking of putting them, putting them to sleep, let's just take him at this guard right here and put him to sleep. And then give him a really horrific and tragic death. We'll drop a bomb right on top of him. And, wow, he really did have a horrific and tragic death. I just blew him up right into the laser defense system. I kind of feel really bad about that guard, to be honest. supporting that disco ball and I can get out of here. What's with taking out the disco ball? Its impact will shake the nightclub's front peacock side loose from its mori. Look, I can't talk. Now I've got to keep moving. Keep safe. Oh, Bentley. You, you're the most nervous out of all the Cooper Gang members. However, you we all know you're the most bloodthirsty. Now, this is a level I really like having a lot of fun with Bentley. Mostly because I like the like aesthetic of the level. I did not know that there was actually briefcases up there. You, can I even do anything? No, I can't even reach up there with my throwing grenades. I think I have to come back here later when he has the, like, the, the jetpack gadget. Huh. Of all the years, I never noticed that up there. But yeah, I liked having a lot of fun in this level with Bentley just because his short stature allows him to do a lot of fun, stupid things. I always played around in this level a lot as a kid. Like right here, if you hit on right here. I just like it because he, his height is perfect for him to just be like, uh, uh, I guess like the, the manager in this area. He's just like, hello and welcome to Dimitri's nightclub. Uh, please take a seat and I'll have a waiter, waitress with you in just a moment. It's always fun to play around with him. I, I actually do like playing as Bentley a, a bit more than Murray. Mostly because I just like playing around with his gadgets. I like Bentley as a character more, and also the fact that he's just a lot more fun to play as. 
Doesn't mean I'm still not going to do a lot of property damage here. Uh, there is actually an Easter egg located inside this level that we can show off. What the hell? I never noticed that up there. I'm going to guess that's one of the developers for the game. Right. Just going to sneak on over here to this guard. Now, guards will only be taken out by bombs if they are asleep. Unfortunately, if you do drop a bomb on them, then it doesn't actually knock them out, or I guess in this case, kill them. It will just damage them. I think it will put them into a stun state, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And I'm not going to try it around with Bentley, especially with these guys. Because the flashlight guards, I think, even do more damage to Bentley than they do to Sly and Murray. Alright, buddy. I don't think he actually passes the grid location, so I'm just going to put him to sleep because he's been working hard. He could use a break. And don't worry, he's going to have a very, very long break. I'm going to break uh, what I'm going to guess is a trash can? It's a little too small and narrow to be a trash can, to be honest. I'm going to take care of the final guard in this room. And now we have free reign of the place. I don't know about you. I always wanted a chair like this. It it just looks so comfortable. Some people will be like, oh, man, that looks like a really uncomfortable chair to sit in. I don't know. I kind of would like to have it for the recording studio. Go around, keep breaking stuff. Keep causing ungodly numbers of property damage. I see Dimitri's already placed the property damage inside his office up there because this actually was an interconnecting level to Sly's bug painting mission. Because right up there, as you can see glowing, there's the bug painting. I think you can actually still see the fact that it's a bugged one, but it, not at this angle. Just gonna keep breaking stuff real quick. No, no one's going to be dancing to the disco in this place by the time I'm through. Alright, that should be everything breakable up on the second floor. Alright, buddy, what will it be? A Bloody Mary? Sure, I'll get right on that. I, I, I do a horrible Bentley voice. I don't even know what that voice was. I, I can't do... I used to do a good Bentley voice back in the day, but now I can't I can't get that, like, that nasally tone that Bentley always has. Let's see if I can actually get a look at uh, the bug painting over there. Draw distance is not my friend with this level, but I... I think I can still get a view of it if I zoom in enough with my Binocucom. Uh, let's see. Yep. There's the, the Sly's goofy little mug on that painting. Still surprised Dimitri has been none the wiser. There's... Is that supposed to be the water pump as well from Murray? No, that's that can't be, but there is a... Thing. Wow, there is a lot of in here that I did not know of. I'm going to definitely have to come back here at some point in the future when I, I get like a way for Bentley to become more vertical. I definitely want to explore this level a bit more now. But for now, I'll be destructive. Just going to keep breaking stuff. And we got one more support beam to go for, and which is right over here. Well, that's done. Uh, I just want to explore this level a bit more now that I've found all these new things. And I don't know about you, this seems like a really cool location for like a nightclub. Uh, you got like half uh, above and below the water. That, what the hell? What? That is a really ugly fish out there. What am 
I looking at? That doesn't even look like a fish. It looks like a really deformed shark or like a blobfish or something. What am I even looking at? I have never noticed that before. I think uh, back in the original version of this game, it had like a small couple of fish uh, like swim around back and forth, but I have never noticed that thing uh, sitting back there. It's kind of creepy. Maybe I should change my idea, uh, idea about that. Uh, whole nightclub half below, half above the water thing. Now, before we go, there's a little bit more property damage I want to do. Back here, I want to break everything. So, uh, doing that, uh, just put a uh, chains of music in here to like a, a little like remix. It's more of like a Dimitri theme remix than, well, the Dimitri theme that's playing in here right now. Also, Dimitri has like a secret message. It's hard to it's hard to hear, but I could possibly like blow it up again just so people can hear it a little bit better. For now, uh, unfortunately, don't let that open gate over there fool you. Draw distance will play a trick on you and will trap you in here with this flashlight guard. So instead, I'm gonna grab this chalice and I'm just gonna escape through the back way. We still got one more thing to go grab. I'm hoping I can pick it up as Murray, but I doubt it. I might have to pick it up as Sly after we're done with Murray's mission. Just make our way back over here, up up here, and get safely back to the safe house. I, I am actually going to do a quick zoom in on the other balcony over there just to see if uh, the other treasure is located up there, because I could have sworn it was. No. Maybe, oh wait, I think I know where it is. And I don't think it's a location Murray can get to. I think it is something only Sly can do. And you. Now, am I right about this or am I wrong about this? Not on that one. I think it's the one over there on the far side. Unfortunately, draw distance is not being my friend today. Yep, there it is. I see it. And yeah, and unfortunately, Murray cannot get up to it, so we'll have to get it with slide next time. Okay, Murray. That alarm horn will tip off Dimitri during our heist. There are three of them out here, and I need you to take them out. Check. This is going to take some serious muscle, Murray. You're the only guy on the team who can pull this off. Stop to pick things up, then throw it at those alarm horns. Good luck, pal. This could get rough. Evildoers feel my wrath. So this level, or this mission, I should say, has a bit of a change from the demo of the game. In the demo, the dialogue there was vastly different. Uh, instead of, like, Murray being okay with the mission and understanding what he has to do to take out these alarm horns and such, uh, the way Bentley talks to him right there, Murray actually takes offense to what Bentley is. It's just like, well, you don't have to talk to me like I'm a child, Bentley. Jeez. And it's just like, it's genuine anger towards Bentley, which, as someone who grew up playing this game and playing the demo not too long ago, it's such, like, a 180 with the tone of this and how the characters are towards each other. I'm glad they changed it because it just seemed like needless hostility between the two characters. But damn, it was a lot different back then. I wonder what else changes uh, character-wise were for the game. All right, uh, you know what? Let's grab this sign right here, break this alarm. Let's grab the world's hardest piece of newspaper and break that, and then we'll use the the guard's limp body as the final projectile piece. There we go. 
You know, it's really lucky for Murray that all the flashlight guards in this section of the city decided to take a break at this very exact moment that he has to be down on the ground floor. Otherwise, this really could have been... One of these days, I really need to learn to keep my mouth shut. I swear, the games have it out for me. They are sentient, and they always want to just prove me wrong. I've never actually seen a flashlight guard out here, let alone two of them. And I'm in a no-win situation right here. All right. Well, I guess this will be a good chance to test out my new flaming fist. Just walk up to him, punch him, and immediately incinerate him. Yeah, like I said, this game's a lot more morbid than people remember it for. That was not what I wanted to do, but okay. At least I still get to use him as a projectile. Oh, here comes. Where did you guys even come from? Well, either way, we're done. Yeah, just like that. Okay, fellas, the dominoes are all in place. Time to pull off the big heist. First, Murray will help me break into the old water tower. From there, I should be able to shut down the plaza fountain. Dimitri's sure to send someone out to get the repair truck. Slot, you'll pickpocket the truck keys off this guy once he shows up. Then hand them off to me and Murray in the plaza. We'll go steal the truck while you climb to the top of the nightclub's peacock sign. When you're in position, Murray will fire the truck's winch line up to you, and will use it to pull down the side. If my calculations are correct, the impact should create an entrance to the printing press room. Then, Sly, you jump in, grab the clockwork tail feathers, and we all get the heck out of here. 